Hi and welcome to Kitty Plays The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. You might notice that this time there is no screen, no backwards mirror. I actually haven't even my video camera set up right now. This is because since this game is full screen and not uh, originally in a low resolution, I decided to show you the whole screen of the game instead. Um, Morrowind I chose Morrowind for doing a Kitty Play season because I have a little story about that game and it got me hooked on the Elder Scrolls series on all the following games basically. So that story is as follows. Uh, my best friend got a new PC and with that graphics card came two, came two CDs. One of them was the Morrowind game, and one of them was the Elder Scrolls construction set for Morrowind. And I started playing it on my computer, which was hopelessly underdimensioned for that game. And I played it with something about 5 to 12 frames per second. And the game just... It just absorbed me so much that I... I couldn't stop playing, even, even though I was like l looking at a slideshow of pictures, I couldn't stop playing the game. And um, I just wanted to... to so, so this game is, is, is like a big thing for me, for, for, for my personal history. So this is why I wanted to play this in the Kitty Place also. Um, because as you might have noticed, all the games that I played have played a major role in my personal history. Okay, so now let's first of all head into the world of Morrowind. Each event is preceded by prophecy, but without the hero there is no event. In the waning years of the third era of Tamriel, prisoner born on a certain day and to uncertain parents was sent under guard without explanation to Morrowind, ignorant of the role he was to play in that nation's history. They have taken you from the Imperial City's prison, first by carriage and now by boat. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. That's normal. Especially... Since I'm playing with lots of mods, they need to initialize first. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? Okay, so before I tell Gio my name, I'm going to adjust the volume sliders in the recording software a little bit. Just turn down the volume the slightest. Okay, there we go. Good sir. Uh, well, I, wouldn't, I don't think I'd say good sir because I'm playing a prisoner here. But nonetheless, I am knighty. Not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. Quiet. Here comes the guard. This is where you get off. Come with me. Uh, this means you're actually going to release me? I mean, prisoner? You better do what they say. Well... I guess if you say so, I'm going to follow you. Uh, 
Yes. The bad pathfinding. Get in yourself up on deck and let's keep this as civil as possible. Yep, it tells me that I reconfigured my controls. This is where they want you. Head down to the dock and I'll show you to the census office. And there we have a little lag. You finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. And now we can create our character. Um, so back in the days when I played Morrowind, I always played a fighter kind of type guy. And um, I've always played the sneaky archer type of guy in the follow-up games. So I decided to actually play something different today. This time I'm going to try to play a mage type. But of course I can't select any other character type, any other race than the Khajiit. So let's look for an interesting face. Oh yeah, I like the fangs. Oh no, no lion's mane, but that one looks great. I mean, within the possibilities of that game, right? Great, I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. Okay, so as you might notice, there is reflection in the water, and yes, there are some lag spikes. Um, I've installed a couple of mods. If you know the, the look of the vanilla game, um, I've installed better textures. Um, I've installed a mod that makes Aidani into a real town. I might not now know how to pronounce the names of the towns properly, so you might be able to laugh at my utter mispronunciation of the town names. So let's head into the census and excise office. And also if I mispronounce an English word, it's due to me not being a native speaker. Oh, it's nice and warm here. Let's warm up. It was pretty cold down in that ship, you know. Okay, so I've, I've been told to report to someone inside here. Um, I've been told that I'm going to be released. Is that true? Yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. Well, I'm just going to give you the info, to be honest. So as I said, I'm going to play some kind of mage. So either I'm going to choose the mage, which is very good in, in um, most of the ma magic things, or a battle mage, which can use heavy armor. I think I'm actually going to go for the classical mage, who is n not able or not very good at wearing armor. So you can see the minor skill is, the armor skill is unarmored. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to use um, attack spells mainly. Let's see how that goes. If it doesn't go well, I'm going to create a different character. Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? Yeah, the sign. That's um, different than uh, you might know from Skyrim. In Skyrim you activate stones that um, that correspond to a sign. You get this um, this power-up and here you actually... You, it is associated with your character. That's something that they also still had in Oblivion. So, of course, the mage s springs to your eye because it, it already has the name the mage and it, forti sorry, it fortifies our magical energy. But let's take a look about, uh, through what they're doing. So the apprentice has also a weakness to magic. Um, I don't think we want to be weak to magic. I don't know what stunted magicka means. So I'm not going to use that. Personality and endurance, of course, is interesting. Um, we could do the lover's kiss once a day, which paralyzes and damages fatigue. Of course, we could also just fortify magicka. Um, turn the undead. Basically poison. 
invisibility, fortify speed, sanctuary. I don't know what sanctuary does, to be honest. The tower key? So, so the power is, is what we can do once a day. I think I'm actually going to go with the mage. Just, just like fortify our maximum magicka by half our intelligence. Okay. Interesting. Now, before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. Okay, now let's see. We are Nighty the Khajiit Mage. We are born under the sign of the mage. And I think the maximum values here are 100. So we're pretty well, low, low in everything. He, again, here the, the levels are up to 100, so we're not very good at anything. Which is okay. We have the ability of Fey, which fortifies our maximum magic. I hope that this is something that always applies, that it's just there, we don't have to activate it. We have the Eye of Fear, so we can yeah make people run away, and we ha already have some spells that we can cast. For example, Fire Damage, Chameleon, uh, Restore Health. Let's go with that. Now we have a stats menu, which can we show your we... papers to the captain when you exit to get your release fee? Yes, sir. I'm going. I'm, I'm right now just explaining to the people uh, how it works. We have this um, the stats menu. It said right clicking activates it, but I rebound the key and it Take didn't your notice papers. that. Off the table and go see Captain Gravius. <sighs> yeah, okay, I'm going to take the papers. So here again it says, uh, for release by Emperor Uriel Septim the seventh degree to the district of Fardenfell in the province of Morrowind. Name Nighty, race Khajiit, class Mage. Signed, Sukutius Ergala, agent of the Sedonine, Imperial Census and Excise. Sixteenth of Last Seed, Third Era, year 427 and now we have an inventory menu and i don't get the um time to explain all this stuff to you so i'm going to go to a place where we have more privacy so i can show that stuff out over to you continue through to the next building and talk to Celis gravius yes so i'm going to open this door and now we have a little bit more privacy here's no one there so what I wanted to say is I rebound the um, menu key to tab, which is the menu key in most of the other games. And here I am. This is me rearranging the, uh, the two menus. There are two more menus uh, that will appear, namely the magic menu and the map. Okay, so we're going to head over. So the first thing what everyone does in the beginner's area of any Elder Scrolls game is just pick up anything you can grab. Because you can. And you have a little bit of money at the beginning. Of course here. These ingredients. So when I activate the bedroll it tells me that I can rest in the wilderness. I can't use that one though. Now it wants to teach me how to combat, so yeah, this is basically the tutorial. I'm just going to pick up everything here. Nice stuff that you have. So this is just like for starting gold and the tutorial area. I can eat the ingredients directly, I can also make potions, and we're going to do that. Because of course I'm going to join the major skill. Look, there is an empty piece of paper. Let's take that. There is another empty piece of paper. Let's take the crab meat and all the silverware. We can use the liquor like a potion. And we found ourselves a little lockpick. And as you can see, I took the lights and it immediately grew a bit darker. And I'm not going to read out all the books. There actually is an ebook which contains all the books of, I think, Oblivion. And Oblivion, as far as I remember, contains all the books of this game, plus some more. So if you want the books to be read, you, you could drop me a comment if you want me to do a reading of the books. This, of course, means um, that I will revisit 
all of the locations. I mean, being a proper mage, I'm going to collect the books, right? I'm going to have a big library of books in the end. Okay, let me let me take that one too. And so I can't could read that. And now we have a little note which says, I don't think I've forgotten our wager. I want this dagger sharp as a scam's claw by morning. Okay, and now we have our inventory men menu. And we can equip the dagger by just pulling it onto our guy. I can press F to draw the weapon. And now I can left click to attack. And I actually selected the option that the game will automatically use the best attack possible for the weapon. Because there are three different attacks, which you usually access by moving, like moving from left to right, will do the slash left to right motion. Moving up down will do the up down slash, and just cl left clicking will do the stab, as you've seen. Um, but I want to spare me that. So let's see. I have a map menu. Let's put the map where it belongs. I don't want the map to be that big. I can switch between a local and a global map. For some reason, the local map uh, sometimes seems to reset in this game. And this is the island. This is the place where we actually play. And then here we take a little ring. And once we take that ring, we get the magic menu where we can select which magic we want to cast. I'm actually going to bury this little mini map because it's in my opinion it's pretty worthless and we can hover over the currently active effects which is the 45 maximum magicka well you can see we have 75 points okay so this is rather technical let's head into the census and excise office and talk to the captain and I'm going to do this and here I'm actually going to read out the dialogue. So this game didn't have um, voiced dialogue, so I'm going to do, I'm not going to do voices, but I'm going to read out the dialogues. First, let me take your identifications papers. Thank you. Word of your arrival only you reached me yesterday. I'm Celis Gravius, but my background's not important. I'm here to welcome you to Morrowind. So what's Morrowind then? Yes, you're in Morrowind. I don't know why you're here or why you were released from prison and shipped here, but your authorization comes direct directly from Emperor Uriel Septim VII himself, and I don't need to know any more than that. When you leave this office, you're a free man, but before you go, I have instruction on your duties. Instructions from the Emperor, so pay careful attention. Um... You might think of me as some kind of backwards guy, but who exactly is this Uriel Septim? Yes, Uriel Septim is still the Emperor. According to my instructions, he personally authorized your release from prison and your delivery here. It's all very mysterious, but that's the way the Empire works. Silence, secrecy. Let not the, let not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Well, what are my duties then? This package came with the news of your arrival. You're to take it to Chaos Casades in the town of Belmora. Go to the South Wall Corner Club and ask for Chaos Casades. They'll know where to find him. Serve him as you would serve the Emperor himself. I also have a letter for you and a dispersal to your name. So, so who is this Chaos Casades fellow? Report to Chaos Casades in Belmora. I can't tell you where to find him, but you're to go to the South Wall Corner Club and ask for him. Someone there can direct you to him. And what about Balmora? Well, Balmora is north of Sedanin. The road passes Pelagiat village and for Pelagiat. Crosses a deep ravine, passes Fort Moonmoth, then turns west across the Odai River and into Balmora. The South Wall Corner Club is in southeast Balmora on the east side of the river. For more detailed instructions, talk to Elone the Scout at Errol's Tradeouts here in Sedanin. But take my advice, you're new here. Take the Silstrider to Balmora. Fast, cheap, safe. Cross the bridge and head east. Can't miss it. Honestly, I'm not going to take the Silstrider. I'm going to walk to every location for the first time, then use fast travel. 
and when there is a long walk without anything happening I might even be cutting that out because sometimes sometimes you run around cluelessly okay thank you so where was Go the ahead, stranger this is where we head in so we are heading out here I'm not going to steal from him because he might see us and now we got ourselves a little journal there journal of nighty my orders are to go to the town of Belmora in Vardenfell district and report to a man named Chaos Sades. To find out where he lives, I should ask in Belmora at the corner club called Southwall. When I find Chaos Sades, I must give him a package of documents and wait for further orders. Nope, I must click the close button. Okay. This better be important. You don't sound that um, happy. Are you the one that boat dropped off? Ought to see a boat arrive at that time of the day. Hope the Imperials treated you today uh, treated you okay. I swear they took my ring. I swear one of the guards has it. I had it last week before their weekly Let's Shake Down Fargoth ritual. An engraved healing ring, family heirloom of mine. You haven't seen it, have you? Yeah. I'm going to give the ring back to him. I found it here. Take it. You found it? Amazing! Thank you, thank you. You're now my favorite friend. I'll be sure to tell the others, especially my friend Aril, who runs the trade house here. Go see him. He'll be happy to see you now. That's good. So we just gave him the ring we found at the beginning. And... Now look at this. This fountain normally isn't part of Balmora. This is part of a mod. And even here, all these neat... <laughs> There's a box down here. It must have fallen down there. Well, let's head to the trade house. Okay, I'm trying to talk a bit more in this one. I didn't talk that much in Inherit the Earth. So I hope that I'll be talking enough for you. By the way, I'm not drinking beer. This is a German, a German Coke from a German company from Hamburg, which is called Fritz Cola. Has more caffeine than regular Coke, and this one is without sugar, so with artificial sweeteners. And this one, and no, I'm not sponsored by them, but this one is um, the. One of the few beverage with artificial sweeteners that I can drink without tasting the sweeteners. Yeah, by the way, this is what happens if you leave the mouse alone for a while. You get this vanity camera where you can see yourself. Of course, I can also see myself in the inventory. And when I make the inventory big, I can I can't turn myself around here, but I can take off my armor which basically is clothing right now. And I don't think we will be wearing much armor. Maybe I'm going to wear light armor at some point in time, but I don't think so. Hey, Aril, uh, Fargoth sent me over to you. Hey. Hello, by the way, I'm, I think I'm going to do a little bit of voices. Hello, by the way, your clothing fits. You might be interested in a tailoring kit. Ask me about it if you'd like one. So this is an item from one of the mods. It can be used to change the clothes of M NPCs if they don't fit their um, their appearance. So I'm going to get the tailoring kit. Yeah, tailoring kits are used to make minor alterations to your clothing so that they fit your race better. For example, Argonian, Argonian females look funny if they try to wear a shirt made for another race. If you see someone who has a problem with their clothes, sorry, it's because they haven't used a tailoring kit to make their clothing fit. Use a tailoring kit to make your clothing fit. Since it's often necessary for our customers to use them to make the clothes we sell fit, most traders give them off for free. Don't have one? Take one. Well, thank you. Um, I'm actually going to go and trade with you. I've got some interesting things to sell you. Again, this is the trade window and usually I'm I want to see myself 
big in the trade window. And the other guy, just like that. Look at that. So we're going to sell, first of all, this all the silverware we found. Can I? Yeah, if I press the shift button, I will just send all of them over. The knife, the goblets, fork, the empty flasks, and all of these things that are purely of worth. We have the package, the note to... I'm going to keep all that paper stuff. And look at that, bread restores fatigue, so we know a little bit of what these things do. Which also is very good. Oh, drain willpower is not that good. That's Willpower is what we need as a mage, so I'm going to sell that. And these we can use to make potions, so these I'm going to keep. So now the official worth is 141, and I'm going to sell it a little bit more expensive. Yes, he did it. Thank you, please come again. So let's let's actually see what you have for sale. So I, I will need, or to be honest, I'm going to take a little look at my character first. Goodbye. So as you can see, all the armor things are down here, but we have 10 points in the light armor skill. And I'm, I think I'm going to go with the light armor. Yep. Speak quickly, Outlander, or go away. Even though we're better unarmored from skill wise. But I'm going to try this. So I'm going to try. Show me only the clothing. So this is light armor. Chitin. I think he only has that one. I'm, I'm currently pondering if I should do this. I think being a mage, I don't think I should do this I'm going to wear a robe I changed my mind and how about this pair of shoes maybe even a pair of pants if we can wear it under the robe ah uh, you know what I'm going to check how I'm going how I'm looking with these I only want I don't need a shield and that a skirt no I'm not wearing skirts again I'm tuning that up a bit because it makes him like me more and let's see how uh, how we're going to look so the robe does not did it replace no it did not replace so I don't want to wear this just put on our armor because now we don't see the the, the thing that I was pondering was um, if I want to wear the armor because uh, we might see it and I think I'm going to leave out the pauldrons because you see them yeah I'm going to a little bit for aesthetics and um, no, I'm going to yeah I, I think I'm going to do that no helmet because I want to see our glorious head in the later games you can't even wear a helmet I do enjoy a good conversation Oh yes, you and me both, my friend. So we can't wear boots and shoes, of course, at the same time. But maybe he has better pants. Let's let's take a look at the pants he has. Nope, only these and these don't look that much better than ours. How about weapons? I'm not actually... Um, yeah, too bad you can't um, like sort them. Does he have a better dagger? No, he doesn't. Okay. How about magic stuff? Well, these are important. Um, I'm just checking my, my gold. Because these teleport us to um, the nearest Imperial Fort. And these we can't afford. Stuff fatigue, crystal health. And I'm going to go down to 30. Offer refused. 35. There we go. Okay, so this is how, how the bartering works here. 
Um, now let's see about... Nope. She does. I thought she was selling clothing. Let's see. We just... I just thought we bought ourselves a pair of pants, but no, we didn't. You like to dance close to the fire, don't you? Of course. Oh, look at that. You look like you could use a friend, Outlander. Perhaps I can be your friend. I'd like you to help me recover some gold. Recover some gold? That's right. See, I had a bad run of luck playing nine holes and lost a bit of money. Normally, I'd be fine. We can usually keep some gold in our pockets just from the money the locals pay us for uh, protection. But I know some of them are holding out on me, especially that little fetcher, Fargoth. He's come up light the past couple of weeks when I've shaken him down. I know he's stashing it somewhere. I'd like you to find Fargoth's hiding place. Fargoth? Fargoth? Isn't he the one that we just... Well, what about Fargoth's hiding place? I know the little fetcher's got someone uh, somewhere in town. Just not sure where yet. I've already gone through this whole house, so I know he's not hiding it in there. I'd like you to find out where he's stashing his gold. If you can, I'll give you a share of the wealth. You up for it? Well, let's see. We just helped him get his ring back, and now we're going to... Ah, what gives? It's a starter quest. Let's just do it. Excellent. Here's what I want you to do. I'm not sure where he goes, but I know he wanders around town that night. Watch his movements. The best vantage point is on top of the lighthouse south of town. That will give you a nice view of all of Sedanin. If you keep an eye on where he goes, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out where he's hiding that gold. Okay, people. So we got our fir ourselves our first quest. And I think we're going to pursue that one in the next episode because I plan to make the episodes only 30 minutes. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the conversation, drop a quick save, and then go to the next episode. So I'm saying bye-bye. But before I say bye-bye, actually, I'm going to explain to those who are new again how the thing with the episodes works. I'm pretty sure you will you will want to know when the next episode comes out. So I've made a little thing, mainly due, mainly due to a weird law in Germany. If you have um, if you have a schedule when when you send stuff, when you broadcast stuff, then uh, you actually count as um, as a broadcasting station. So you need to register. And I thought, hey, it'd be a fun way and and, and a little. A little change if I circumvented this by not having a fixed schedule so the next episode doesn't come out next Monday or something but the next episode comes out a few days later and how many days will be decided by me rolling 2d6 so th this is two regular dice and adding the numbers up so if you do the maths it could be that it that the next episode comes out in si two days could be that the next episode comes out in 12 days. These are both very unlikely because I need to roll two ones or two sixes. But the most likely is or is that the next episode comes out in seven days. And if you do a lot of rolls, it'll be around weekly episodes. So this is why I decided to use 2d6. So I'm going to cut over to the dice rolling and now I'm saying bye-bye.